Uranium at the PDAC. Absolutely. Thanks for coming to join us today from GoVX. Thank you. GoVX trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GXU, and you have uranium projects in Africa. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. We got projects in Niger, Zambia, and Mali. What stage is each one of them at? Um, the primary one is Niger, it's Maduela. It's fully permitted, environmental permits, mining permits. So we're working on fi finalizing the feasibility study for that. Right. We're already working on the debt structuring. We've got expressions of interest from two ECAs and five banks that cover our full debt, which is two thirds of our total capital. We're working on optimizing that project still, bringing the OPEX down, bringing the CAPEX down, while the market's quiet. Right. Um, in Zambia, we picked up two projects, we merged them together, got 140 kilometers of strike length, wow, already, already permitted um, as well. Um, by merging them together, fantastic economies of scale. Both of those projects will produce over two and a half million pounds where, per annum. Where will you mill it? We'll do processing on site in both companies. So are you going to, one, one mill for both sites or one mill no, each? They're so far apart country-wise. I mean, one's up in North Africa and one's in Southern Africa, so it's a really long way. Um, but no, both sites are going to be designed to produce yellow cake and ship out yellow cake from them. Uh, and then, so both companies, projects, less than $38 a pound, all in, including all their capital. All the infrastructures there, great jurisdictions. And the last project we have is in Mali. Um, it's an advanced exploration play. It's actually gone to PF once, but it was never issued. Right. So all the technical studies there. So you've got a company now that's had $250 million of technical studies invested on it. So well advanced. The arena market generally has been a hard one to predict over the past few years. We've all been waiting for a rebound in pricing and it's slowly battling its way up. <laughs> What's your take on it? I've been with this company for five years and I've enjoyed the pleasure of sliding uranium prices. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I have to stay a little longer to enjoy the upside. Um, I think what you see now is there were a lot of pressures on the top and each year we go past one of those pressures has come off. I right. think the problem we've had is they've just taken longer for them all to add up. Um, if you look at what UXC Consulting is saying, they're looking at a deficit this year. Uh, I think the overhangs that we've got at the moment, you've got the impact of the US guys, uh, the section 232. Right, from energy fuels and... Yeah. and what it's done is just take the US buyers out of the market. And they're the biggest spot buyers. So the guys you want there in the market buying are just not there at the moment. So that's there, what... That, there were rumors yesterday that at the Kazakhstan presentation here at PDAC, uh, there was some intimation they were going to flood the market with cheap uranium. But why would you? They put a, they've reduced their production forecast twice. One was an original cut, one was. I think what they actually said is, uh, if China grows, we can expand to fill it was what they said. Whether okay. they do is another different matter. There's no reason for them to flood. They've made it very clear that they're trying to support their own asset base as well. Um, I think the other one you've got to watch for this year is Cameco and right. see where they come through. They made their production cut, but they still had inventory. So they're actually meeting their contracts through their own inventory and reducing down. But Cameco's problem is it needs that term price back over $40, which is where its average book is now. So just what, what is Cameco's average cost of production? Um, about 25. So yeah, it needs a lot higher. Right. Um, to just, I mean, term price is all about long-term resource replacement. Cameco needs a high price to replace its resources. Uh, and that's one of the issues you've got going forward. 20% of world production in the next five to 10 years closes, has to be replaced. Has to be replaced. That's two cigar lakes. And secondary sales are going to go from 50 down to 35 in the same time. That's another cigar lake. Okay. So three cigar lakes have to replace. It ain't coming out of Canada because Canada takes 10 years to permit a mine. Ooh. What about the Utah region? They're not big enough. Just not the they're not big, they're, not, they're, they're small deposits around that area. I mean, they're perfectly good deposits. They need a lot higher price, but you know, we're well over two and a half million pounds each. So we're kind of the middle echelon. Right. Your Athabascas, your, your, your monsters, and then you've got the rest. Uh, what's next for GoVX? Uh, next for GoVX is all going to be about driving forward those things we're pushing forward, putting out announcements on where we are on the optimization, reducing the counts. You did some balance sheet cleanup today, didn't you? Uh, we, did on Friday. Friday. we did on Friday. Friday. We, yeah, we had a uranium loan that we had with uh, Toshiba Corporation from 2012. So we got $7 million of cash in from selling the uranium. It was £200,000. The interest was based on uranium, so every year we owed them more and more uranium. Right. So as if, if the what uranium, they call PIC, payment in kind. Yeah, but if the uranium price ran, of course, we had to pay them a lot more. So what we've done is agree to take it out now um, at a marked discount to the book value, uh, partly because they've had all their problems. They've sold Westinghouse, which is the reactor business. So right. they were cleaning their own balance sheet up, and we 
agreed with them it was a good time to clean our balance sheet. So good. that leaves us clean, got rid of our offtake contracts with them as well. We've got no security on anything. So it's all about getting this company ready. And when uranium rocks, you should roll. We will really rock. In last year, when the uranium price went from 18 to 28, yep. our share price went from 10 to 44. Wow. We were the highest performing, most leveraged stock out there when it goes. Looking forward to seeing that happen again. So, so am I. Tell me about it. Thanks for coming by. It's a pleasure. Thanks, eh? Bye. Take care. Cheers.